I received a request for this recipe from one of my viewers. My initial instinct was to decline it because this is a fairly simple dish with many recipes posted online already. But what I discovered as I looked through these other recipes was both a lack of professional techniques and complaints galore about a severe lack of flavor in the final product. This is an old dish and people didn't buy chicken pieces back then. They made a meal out of an entire chicken, which is what I've shown here. It's all tender and delicious by the time you're done and packed with flavor. I began with a two kilogram, about four and a half pound chicken that I took apart, um, the uh, skin on breasts, and I separated the legs and the thighs. Uh, I've also got um, celery, carrot, and onion. These are past their prime, the celery and the carrot. They're old, but they're still perfectly fine for stock restaurant way we do things, the old vegetables get used in stock. Uh, half a dozen cloves, that's the spice, half a teaspoon of black peppercorns, and a few sprigs of dill in lieu of the traditional bouquet garni for uh, a stock, because this isn't a plain vanilla stock, we're making a specific dish out of it. Now, here I have the chicken carcass in a pressure cooker, um, along with the wings. Uh, I put the, uh, the wings in there because they're not really useful for this dish, and they'll add more flavor to the stock. Here's the onions, carrots, celery, dill, and spices. I'm going to add a liter of water to this. And uh, put the lid on, bring it to a boil, and pressure cook it. Press this down, get as much of the as much as you can out of it. Then use a fat separating pitcher to get rid of the layer of fat on top. begin by grinding up this dried Hungarian chili. Uh, you can use paprika that's already been prepared, but if you read my cookbooks you know the importance of drying your own, especially in a recipe like this where paprika is the key ingredient. Don't put the stem in though. Uh, in addition to this I'm going to add about one and a half teaspoons of coarse salt and about half a teaspoon of brown sugar. I have the chicken pieces laid out here. I'm going to sprinkle all of this on it. Like a lot of spice, but like I said, big complaint with this dish usually is that it doesn't have enough flavor. Now well, we're not going to have that complaint with this version. Get it massaged on a little bit. Now we're going to add that flour, about two tablespoons of flour. Also standing by are the 100 grams of peeled shallots that I'm going to um, slice thinly in just a few minutes. And this is the chicken stock that was made yesterday. Uh, you can see even though I used the fat separator, there's still a little bit of fat on top of it. And it's quite jelly-like. It's not solid jelly. If I'd reduced it more, reduced it by half, it would be a really thick jelly. But that's okay. It's, it's going to get reduced right here <laughs> when we're making this. We don't need to reduce it anymore right now. There's about 750 grams of this. Uh, so we're waiting for the pan to get hot. Then uh, we're going to cook the chicken. The pan is hot. Add some vegetable oil to it. Swirl it around a little bit here, and then we're going to put the chicken skin side down, of course. Now I've got the pan on 7 out of 1 to 10, and this is going to sit here for about 8 minutes without moving the pieces around because we want them brown quite well on that side. We are 8 minutes later. I'm going to turn these pieces over. Now this may look like it's burnt. It's not burnt. This is just heavy caramelization. It's perfectly fine. Don't let that color worry you. All part of the flavor process. Okay, now it's going to get about five more minutes on the other side. Okay. 
it's been about four minutes and I'm just checking it. This looks okay. This looks just fine. Okay. Transfer this off from bowl to hold. There's all this black, almost black, dark caramelization is what's going to come off. That prong is what's going to come off as it cooks slowly and provides a deep flavor for this. Now we've got the shallots going to the pan. And we'll cook these for a couple minutes before we uh, just soften them up a little bit before we continue. Now while these are cooking, you look at your chicken real close. You'll see it's not actually black. It's just very dark brown. It's not, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be actually charcoal, but it should be very, very close. This on the camera, because of the poor color resolution, probably does look black, but it's really just really, really dark brown. It doesn't have the smell of burn on it. Okay, the shallots have been cooking for about two minutes now. Now I'm going to add all of this. chicken pieces go back into the pan. We'll begin simmering lately. And I get the heat on seven again. I'm going to bring this up to a simmer and then I'm going to lower the heat, keep it at a slow simmer. This sort of very slow simmer will produce the best possible flavor, but of course it will take a very long time to reduce this weight. So you have to balance yourself against, you know, what, uh, how much time do you have versus how great do you want this dish to be. If you really want it to be phenomenal, go slow like this and let it go. It's going to take a long time to reduce. If you in a rush, you can you can make it boil a little bit faster, but don't go crazy. Don't have it like frothing over the top, or it'll, it'll just be ruined. After 30 minutes, I'm going to turn these pieces over. And as you can see, a lot of the fawn that was on the other side has already dissolved into the sauce. And this is what it looks like after about two hours. Um, I've got the sour cream, already uh, spitana in this case, already weighed out. What I'm going to do is transfer a little bit of, of this liquid into the dish with a smetana. If you uh, don't temper it like this, what will happen is that the, uh, the smetana will, will just curdle. I have uh, those two cloves of garlic that were crushed with a garlic press, and then I let them stand for about 10 minutes like this. I explain why to do this in, in volume two of my cookbook. You, you don't want to just crush it and add it directly. Now okay. the sour cream, make sure that you, you whisk this until it's smooth, or reasonably smooth. this a little more, stir it around. I'm going to bring this back up to a simmer now, let it reduce just a little bit more. In about 15 minutes, this is the consistency that you have. This is good. Now, you should have prepared the uh, buttered noodles during this period, and we're ready to plate it. The second volume of my cookbook is now available through Amazon and other booksellers. It covers the YouTube recipes from the last eight months with more in-depth information. I received requests for the procedures on all recipes and I've listened to you. Every recipe has step-by-step -step directions and of course there are recipes that aren't on YouTube. But this is not just a recipe book, far from it as you can see from some of the topics scrolling by here. I'm certain that anyone who watches my channel and any serious cook will find this book a treasury of useful and new information you won't find anywhere else.
If you want to know more about my adventures as a chef around the world and have some great laughs along the way, be sure to check out the video tour of my book, 40 Years in One Night. It's up on YouTube right now. Click the link. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.